सो वेलकम 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 टू येट एन अदर अमेजिंग सेशन ऑन सी ए फाइनल फाइनेंशियल रिपोर्टिंग एंड आई होप आर ऑडियो वीडियो वीडियो ऑडियो ऑडियो वीडियो वीडियो ऑडियो इज एब्सोल्युटली अमेजिंग राइट सो टुडे एज वी ऑल नो वी हैव कंप्लीटेड 50% ऑफ द फाइनेंशियल इंस्ट्रूमेंट सो वी हैव थॉट दैट व्हाटएवर वी हैव स्टडीड वी विल रिवाइज एवरीथिंग इन डिटेल राइट सो द 50% कंटेंट ऑफ फाइनेंशियल इंस्ट्रूमेंट विल बी रिवाइज्ड इन दिस पर्टिकुलर लेक्चर आई विल आल्सो अपलोड दिस लेक्चर ऑन YouTube right for everyone for you guys also and for everyone at large so for those who are going to watch in future on youtube if you are watching this video without subscribing to the channel don't do that okay also please do like the video and if you want these board notes you can download the same from my telegram channel the link is in the description box okay so this message was for the youtube students now so in this lecture what i am going to do is we have revised approximately 50% of the portion and try to make it very easy for you so in this particular ses session we will revise the concepts which we have covered along with the questions in detail the revision in detail will go will go very slowly so that you are able to recall each and every thing okay also those who are watching it i would request you to please keep on repeating what i am asking you at least in your mind or in the chat box or anywhere you like right so that the revision becomes very 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 effective this revision is going to be in 100% english so even my south indian students south indian friends uh, from south india part of the country if you don't understand hindi it is absolutely fine you will definitely benefit from the from this lecture because it is going to be in 100% english so without wasting any time let's start the revision in 3 Two, one, and oh yeah. Okay, so let's start. So first of all, we were discussing about financial instruments. Total, how many indices are there in financial instruments? We have three indices: index thirty-two, index one zero nine, index one zero seven. Okay, what does thirty-two talk about? Mainly, it gives the definition part of the index. Okay, what does one zero nine talk about? It gives the accounting part of the index. And what does one zero seven talk about? It gives the disclosure part of the chapter. So of course, this is not very relevant. 32 is relevant for the basic clarity but main the important index out of this three is 109 of course but we will cover uh, all of them first being index 32 what did we study in index 32 there are total three aspects to be focused here one is the definition point i am going only going to revise the relevant part in this revision video okay do remember that okay so one is the definition point second is the fixed to fixed text wala point and third is the compound financial instrument so let's revise first the definition now what is the definition of financial first definition is of financial instrument so what is financial instrument before studying this you should know what is financial asset what is financial liability and what is equity so let's start with what is a financial asset so ideally it is any asset first of all to be a financial asset it should be an asset which is either cash that means if you have a cash balance bank balance it is a financial asset or equity instruments of another entity that means if you have invested in any company's equity shares it is a financial asset for you example let's suppose i akash kandoi invest in the shares of reliance company so that reliance company equity shares will be for me a financial asset second okay that was a and b then point number c total point number c has three points c1 c2 c3 what is c1 contractual right to receive cash what is the meaning of this if under any asset you have a contractual right to receive cash example debtors what is the meaning of debtors i make a sale on credit so from that party i have a contractual right to receive cash contractual right that means that party 100% has to pay money to me right that is known as contractual right to receive cash so that will consider to be a financial instrument okay that was c1 what is c2 contractual right to receive equity instruments of another entity what is the meaning of this if you have any asset under which you will not receive cash but you will receive equity instruments of another entity sir what is such instrument example when you invest in any convertible debenture so under convertible debenture for the interest part you will receive cash okay but for the principal part they will not give you a cash back they will give you the equity shares of that company that means here in this convertible instrument you have a contractual right to receive equity instruments of another entity so it will be also be a financial asset third point is contractual right to receive any other financial asset sir give an example of this simple example is when a financial asset is not giving you cash he is not giving you shares but is giving you any other financial asset example trade receivable is giving you bills receivable right from that particular debtors you are not going to receive money you are not going to receive shares you will receive bills some bills so that is contractual right to receive any other financial asset okay and also there is a d point 
कॉन्ट्रैक्ट टू एक्सचेंज फाइनेंशियल एसेट और फाइनेंशियल लाइबिलिटी अंडर पोटेंशियली फेवरेबल कंडीशंस व्हाट आर दीस दीस आर नथिंग बट डेरिवेटिव इंस्ट्रूमेंट्स जस्ट लाइक बेटिंग व्हेन यू बेट सो आइदर देयर इज अ प्रोबेबिलिटी टू विन और लूज इफ यू आर इन अ विनिंग पोजीशन दैट मींस यू हैव यू आर इन अ फेवरेबल कंडीशन सो सच डेरिवेटिव कॉन्ट्रैक्ट्स विल आल्सो बी अ फाइनेंशियल एसेट फॉर यू एग्जांपल इज देयर बिलो वी विल डिस्कस इट डोंट वरी सो दिस वाज द बेसिक डेफिनेशन ऑफ फाइनेंशियल एसेट वी आल्सो डिस्कस्ड मेनी एग्जांपल्स आई विल क्विकली रन थ्रू ऑल द एग्जांपल्स फर्स्ट कैश बैलेंस इट वाज फाइनेंशियल एसेट ट्रेड रिसीवेबल्स इट वाज फाइनेंशियल एसेट इन्वेंटरी not a financial asset sir why see they have not mentioned whether it can be converted into cash or not if you sell inventory you will receive cash but is there a contractual right to receive cash the answer is no no one has promised to do give cash against inventory right there is no contractual right of course it can be converted into cash but there is no contractual right so inventory is not a financial asset same applies with pp not a financial asset loans and advances given whenever you give a loan you will receive the interest you will receive the principal it is a financial asset investment in another company liquid share financial asset investment in bonds what is the meaning of investment in bonds just imagine when you invest in bonds you will receive interest you will receive principal so it is a financial asset acha investment in alliance company convertible bonds so if you invest in a convertible bond will it be a financial asset the answer is yes because interest you will receive in cash principal you will receive equity shares of that particular company so even the contractual right to receive equity shares is a financial asset now yes acha for uh, deep clarity purposes i have also discussed in the class the definition reference that is as per the which point it is financial asset a b c1 c2 c3 that you can do but to be honest even if you are able to identify this much it is more than sufficient anyways let's proceed if you invest in preference shares so that means any kind of investment whether in preference shares whether in bonds whether in debentures whether in equity shares whether in convertible instruments it is nothing but a financial asset okay what about gold see in gold it is just like inventory like just the logic is same like inventory gold can be converted into cash but there is no contractual right here so it is not a financial asset but what if you invest in gold bonds so when you invest in gold bonds then it becomes like a normal bond right so it is a financial asset in that case acha what if there is a prepaid expense what is the meaning of prepaid expense let's say for example you buy my lectures so lectures excess when you buy you will get the excess afterwards that means you are paying the fees in advance so for you that fees paid in advance is a prepaid expense so whether that prepaid expense will be a financial asset the answer is no why because against that prepaid expense you will not receive you don't have a contractual right to receive cash you will receive services or goods for example if you make the payment of fees in advance you will not receive your amount back you will just receive the either the lectures or you will receive some services from my side right so prepaid expense is an asset but not a financial asset okay what if under the prepaid expense i refuse to give the service for example you paid the fees to me i refuse to teach you to you that means i have now obligation to give cash back to you that means when under prepaid expense the service has been refused by the other party that means the cash which you paid is now refundable in that case it will become a financial asset don't worry we have already discussed this detail in detail in class okay do remember if there is interest receivable contractual op, right to receive cash financial asset bills receivable financial asset security deposit given sir what is this remember we discussed in rent agreement the tenant gives some deposit to the owner which is refundable at the end of the agreement right so such de deposit is given by the tenant for tenant it is a financial asset why because he has a contractual right to receive the deposit back at the end of the agreement right okay trade receivable against whom you are going to receive the bills receivable right one financial asset promising you another financial asset so again this trade receivable will be, will be a financial asset okay what about income tax refund see under income tax refund you have a right to receive cash but that right is not a contractual right we discussed it it is a statutory right so it is not covered here apart from it if there is any investment in subsidiary joint venture associate it is covered on a separate index not covered here do remember that part so these were the definition of financial asset along with the examples i am going very slow so that you are able to recall each and everything okay let's proceed further definition of financial liability what is under the definition of financial liability first point now it should be liability it is any liability where you have a contractual obligation to deliver cash see because now it is a liability here you won't have a right to receive cash you will have a obligation to deliver cash so whenever you have a obligation to deliver cash it is a financial liability example creditors trade payables loans okay okay or if there is a contractual obligation to deliver any other financial asset so if you are delivering cash financial liability if you are delivering any other financial asset apart from cash what is financial asset we discussed above so if you are delivering any other financial asset then also it is a financial liability okay contractual obligation to deliver or exchange under potentially unfavorable condition as discussed let's say for example we enter into a betting so for one party it, it will be after some days 
for one party this contract will become favorable so for him it will be a financial asset for the other party this contract will become unfavorable for him it will be a financial liability don't worry we will discuss about this point in detail under the derivative point anyways but just understand whenever you enter into a derivative contract if the position is favorable it is financial asset if the position is unfavorable it is a financial liability anyways there is point number c also but that i will study when i will when i will revise the fixed to fixed test okay anyways let's proceed some examples for this point of financial liability so if you have any trade uh, payables it is a financial liability loan taken under loan whenever you take a loan you have a obligation to give the interest and principal back it financial liability outstanding salary what is the meaning of this whenever the company has not paid the salaries to employee it becomes outstanding salary such outstanding salary is also a financial liability why because if the salary is outstanding can i say the company will have to pay the salary to the employee some other other day so it is a financial liability okay advance income what is the meaning of advance income? Do you remember that example when you are paying the fees in advance for my classes? So for you, if it is a prepaid expense, for the other party, it is advance income. So let's say for example, you paid the fees of classes in advance. So for me, that advance is advance income. So under advance income, will it be a financial liability? The answer is no. Why? Whenever I receive any income in advance, I will not give you the money back. Of course, I will give you the services or goods in, in place of that cash. So it is not a financial liability. Achha, what if the contract is cancelled? I received the advance income, but I refuse to give the services. In that case, I will have to repay your money back. So it will, it will be a financial liability in that case. Okay. Debentures issued. Whenever you issue a debenture, normal debenture, under normal debenture, whenever you issue it to raise funds, so you have to repay the interest back. You have to repay the principal back. So it will be a financial liability. Okay. Now comes the important part. Issue of own equity shares. Whenever the company is issuing equity shares to raise funds, it is not a liability. It is an equity. So whenever the company has to issue or deliver own equity shares, whenever under a liability or any transaction, I am delivering my own equity share. So for the party who is delivering his own equity share, it is an equity transaction, not a financial liability. Do remember that part. Okay. Similarly, if you issue convertible bonds, Convertible, sorry, convertible debentures you issue. Now you are on the issuer side, not the holder side. For holder, this is a financial asset. I am talking from the point of view of issuer. The person who is issuing these debentures, let's ignore the interest part. Under convertible debentures, the principal has to be given under equity shares. So if it is a convertible debenture, for against principal, the company will not give cash back. The company will give its own equity shares. So as I said, whenever you are delivering own equity shares, it is not a liability transaction. It is an equity transaction. Just remember that part. Okay. So whenever you are delivering cash or any other financial asset, it is financial liability. Whenever you are delivering your own equity instruments, it is an equity transaction. Do remember. Okay. Similarly, for convertible preference shares, dividend just ignore. Principal, you are delivering own equity shares. It is an equity transaction. Achha. What if there is a normal preference share issue? Normal means redeemable preference shares. See, there are two types of preference shares. One is convertible. That means you will convert the principal into equity. And one is redeemable. Redeemable means you will, whatever you give, you will give in cash. Dividend you give, you will give in cash. Principal you give, you will give in cash. So whenever normal preferences are issued, it is a financial liability, right? So that means what you studied in your uh, IPCC or maybe your CPT, you, what you studied is, is preference or equity. Debenture is liability. That is not the case always. Why? As per index, you will have to check the substance over form. That means check whether the preference or debenture is convertible or redeemable. If you sleep closely, if the debenture is convertible, that means principal, you will give equity, own equity shares. It is an equity. So that means debenture can also be equity. Achha. If it is a normal preference share issued, redeemable preference share, where you will give cash only, it is a financial liability. That means preference share can also be financial liability, debenture can also be equity. Depends on what? Depends on whether it is convertible or redeemable. Do remember that part. Okay. Then, if you promise to give your trade payable, not giving cash, but giving any other financial asset like bills receivable. So, it is a financial liability. That trade payable is a financial liability. Do remember. Income tax payable, it is a statutory obligation, not in the scope of FI. If there is any provision, not in the scope of FI because it is discussed in India 37. Security deposit accepted. See, we discussed that security deposit given was a financial asset. For the giver, it is a financial asset. For the owner who is receiving the deposit on day one and has to refund in the future. So for this owner, it is a financial liability. No? That is what we discuss here. That the person who is accepting the deposit, for him, it is a financial liability. Right? Also, I made you write one point in OFU that whenever you are discussing about delivering own equity shares, that is an equity transaction. Do remember that part. 
राइट सो गाइज आर यू क्लियर टेल इयर टेल इयर डिड यू अंडरस्टैंड एवरीथिंग This was the basic two definitions. I have consumed. I have gone slow so that you are able to recall this part because if this is strong, future points will also be can be discussed easily. Oh yeah. Okay, sir. <laughs> Chalo, let's continue. Acha. So you understood what is F A. You understood what is F L. Okay. Now I am going to discuss one important concept that is compound financial instrument. Now what is the meaning of compound financial instrument? It is an instrument which has both components. Little little F L. little little equity that means in a single instrument you have little fl also you have little equity also little love also little magic also ha ah, okay sir so that is known as a compound financial instrument right so how to know whether any instrument is cfi or not in short i will call this cfi okay so how to know whether this is cfi or not so first of all we discuss some examples let's say debentures can be of two types either it is redeemable or convertible first we are discussing about redeemable who are we we are the issuer for issuer it might be a financial liability or equity okay so we are the issuer we issue some debentures which are redeemable redeemable means interest also you will give in cash principal also you will give in cash so you raise some funds to debentures which are redeemable interest payment will happen in cash so it will be a financial liability acha principal payment will also happen in cash because it is redeemable so it is also financial liability if both the elements are financial liability it is not a cfi simple okay the second part what if i say the debenture is compulsory convertible what is the meaning of compulsory convertible that means interest will be given in cash but when when you repay the principal here because it is compulsory convertible here the company will not give the cash back to the holders it will give its own equity shares so when it is compulsory convertible now look closely still the interest has to be repaid in cash only so the interest elements becomes fl but for principal against principal the company the issuer is not giving cash back it is giving its own equity shares so as we discussed above whenever the company is delivering own equity share it becomes an equity transaction so little fl little equity the instrument becomes cfi compound financial instrument oh yeah okay sir <laughs> what is this oh yeah sir i don't know i heard it somewhere and it stuck in my mind okay anyways uh same discussion applies to preference shares also so preference shares again can be redeemable can be convertible right so if they are redeemable in preference shares we give we pay dividend and we pay principal okay now for dividend just remember dividend can be discretionary also can be mandatory also if the dividend is discretionary that means company will pay the dividend only when they have funds so in that case if anything is discretionary that means there is no obligation there it is not a financial liability but if dividend payment is mandatory it will be a financial liability what to assume in case of preference shares when nothing is mentioned in the question always assume dividend payment is mandatory right so you will assume it to be a financial liability acha so if let's assume we have a redeemable preference share where dividend is mandatory it is a fl well principal because it is redeemable you will give in cash so principal is also a financial liability if both are financial liability then the whole instrument is fl but what if the preference shares are compulsory convertible compulsory convertible means dividend being mandatory has to be paid in cash so it is fl but principal under principal the company will give own equity shares why because it is compulsory convertible so little fl little equity again it becomes a cfi right acha we made one more discussion here under debentures if they are convertible but not compulsory convertible that means the option for conversion is with someone either with the holder either with the issuer right so now let's discuss this part where the convertible part is optional an option is with some party okay so if the conversion is at the option of the holder if holder of the instrument has the option of conversion then what to do in that case interest you can say let's assume debenture okay let's take one by one debenture convertible conversion option with the holder what to do with interest whoever has the option interest has to be paid in cash so interest will be fl what about principal if holder has the option see we are whom we are the issuer but option with the holder holder means the one who is investing in our company so we are the issuer we are the one who is issuing the debentures but option with the holder then what to do remember i thought you one uh, line just ask yourself whether issuer whether we we are the issuer whether we at our own will can we avoid paying cash whether the issuer at its own will can he avoid paying cash 
when the holder has the option if the holder demands cash issuer will have to pay cash if the holder demands shares issuer will have to give shares but can the issuer at its own will refuse to give cash the answer is no that means the principle will be fl for issuer point of view why because the issuer at its own will cannot decide whether he wants to give cash or avoid paying cash right so whenever the option is with the holder interest will be fl principle will also be fl if both are fl it is not a cfi as of now okay what if the option of conversion was with the issuer if issuer has the option of conversion interest still has to be paid in cash so it is fl but if conversion option is with the issuer then principle is avoidable it can be avoided why because if the option is with the is with the issuer issuer at its own will can avoid paying cash so the principle becomes equity so little fl little equity it is a cfi right okay sir so then i took a oral test for you tell me whether different instruments are cfi or not you already answered me in the class don't worry about it then one small conceptual thing we studied that the concept of cfi is only from the point of view of issuer for holder there is no concept of cfi holder means the investor for investor there is no cfi because for investor whatever he receives whether he receives cash or whether he receives shares of that particular company for him it is both of them are financial asset only so the concept of cfi is only applicable from the point of view of issuer for holder there is no concept of cfi okay for holder it is only a financial asset don't worry about it okay simple then so we discussed definitions we discussed a uh, compound financial instrument the next point under index 32 was fixed to fixed test now what is the meaning of this a simple test which is conducted to know whether the item is equity or not for example let's say i issue compulsory convertible debenture when i say compulsory convertible debenture can i say interest i have to give in cash but for the principal part because it is compulsory convertible that means for principal the company will give own equity shares so principal is equity but whenever we say the principal is equity we will call it equity provided it meets one test and that is known as fixed to fixed test that means whenever in the above example also we called any item equity it was subject to the condition that it is meeting the fixed to fixed test right now sir what is this fixed to fixed test okay so just understand it is very simple that the instrument which i am going to convert let's say for example for convertible debentures i will give equity shares so the number of debentures that are going to be converted should be fixed on day one that means on day one only you should tell that i will convert 500 debentures and against this convertible debentures how many shares you will issue that number should also be fixed on day one that means for example let's say against the 500 debentures i will give 5000 equity shares this number of how much convertible debentures will be converted and how much number of shares will be issued this number for both the element should be fixed if this both are fixed we will meet the fixed to fixed test and if fixed to fixed test is met then only it will be an equity element sir what if f to f is not met if fixed to fixed is not met then the element will be a financial liability then the element will be a financial liability so let's say for example the number of debentures are not fixed they are variable but in equity shares to be issued are fixed doesn't matter financial liability so that means if any of this element is variable financial liability if both of them are fixed then it is equity in detail we discussed in class itself okay okay acha what if nothing is mentioned if nothing is mentioned you will always assume that fixed to fixed test will be met simple is this clear to everyone guys perfect okay let's proceed further then that means for e for any element to be known as equity two conditions are there first of all for that element company will give own equity shares and second that the fixed to fixed test will be met if both of these are met then only it will be equity right acha now come towards the definition of financial liability again uh, now i will do interlinkage with you see under financial liability now you can read the fourth point now you can the c point c point what is written in c point contract to issue own equity shares in variable numbers that means whenever you are giving own equity shares and the numbers are variable anywhere that means in short if the fixed to fixed test is not met see where it is written it is written in the definition of financial liability that means if the own equity shares are variable or if fixed to fixed test is not met then it will not be an equity it will be a financial liability that is why it is written in the definition of fl okay okay sir so done so this was the definition of equity as well so with that we have covered index 30 Tell me, guys, are you able to understand till here? Yes or no? See, this 
ऑल डिफिनेशन वी हैव कवर्ड द डेफिनेशन ऑफ फाइनेंशियल असेट लाइबिलिटी इक्विटी एफ टू एफ एंड सी एफ आई अच्छा वॉट अब द डेफिनेशन ऑफ फाइनेंशियल इंस्ट्रूमेंट सर अर इट इज अ वेरी सिंपल डेफिनेशन सी इफ यू वॉन्ट टू सी द डेफिनेशन ऑफ फाइनेंशियल इंस्ट्रूमेंट नाउ यू कैन अंडरस्टैंड दिस डेफिनेशन इट सेस इट इज अ कॉन्ट्रैक्ट दैट गिव्स राइज टू फाइनेंशियल असेट फॉर वन एंटिटी दैट मीन्स एनी कॉन्ट्रैक्ट अंडर विच दैट कॉन्ट्रैक्ट इज अ फाइनेंशियल असेट फॉर वन एंटिटी एंड फॉर दी अदर पार्टी इट इज आइदर अ फाइनेंशियल लाइबिलिटी और अ इक्विटी That means if you and me enter into a contract, when will our contract be a financial instrument? When for you it is a financial asset and for me it is a financial liability or equity. Then only this contract will be a financial instrument. Simple. I hope this index thirty two is crystal clear to, till here. I have covered all the relevant points that are there in index thirty two. Of course, there are many other points, also small small points, but that are not very critical from exam point of view. From exam point of view, if we are clear till here, that is more than sufficient for index thirty two. Clear. Perfect. Okay, I like it. You have heard this line. There was a movie, "Kabi Khushi Kabi Gham." In that, oh, they used to one actress who used to it. I like it. So even I will say I like it. Okay. Anyway, sir. Now let's proceed with the other part of the chapter. That is index one zero nine. The most important part. The bigger questions, the practical questions are of course asked only from this index. Now what do we discuss in this index? I we will use the board notes again. See again, I am telling you if you want these board notes, they are available on Telegram. You can join from the description is given below. Okay. Okay, sir. Chalo. Let's discuss uh, the index one zero nine part. The first part is classification. First point. Now what is the meaning of classification? See, ideally. Any financial instrument can be classified into three aspects. One is financial asset, one is financial liability, one is equity. Now, how to account for all these three? So first, we discuss for financial asset. What is the meaning of accounting? That means, let's assume we have a PPE. Do you remember for PPE we used to say initial measurement at cost, subsequent measurement at cost, or revaluation model company's choice. Similarly for financial asset, how will the accounting will be done? Right. So that is known as classification of financial asset. So for financial asset broadly, we have four methods. One is either ACM method, that is amortized cost method. Second is FVT OCI method. In FVT OCI, we have R or NR. What is the full form of this? FVT OCI means fair value through other comprehensive income. R means reclassified to PNL. NR means not reclassified to PNL. The discussion of the difference between R and NR we already discussed in India sixteen. Okay, okay. Then the third. Then the fourth point is FVT PL. How come fourth? First ACM, second FVT OCI R, third FVT OCI NR, fourth FVT PL. FVT PL means fair value through profit and loss. Now, out of all these methods, which method will we choose? Will the company has the choice? The answer is no. In this case, which method to apply? It is not dependent on the choice of the company. It is dependent on the outcome of certain test which we will conduct. Out of those test, we have two test. One is business model test, and one is contractual cash flow characteristic test. In short, we call it as CCFC test. Okay. Now, <coughs> what is the meaning of business model test? Business model test will have three outcomes. Not going to detail, but revising everything for you. It will have three outcomes. One, you will either hold your instruments. Second, your model is either hold or trade. Third, it is trade. What is the meaning of this? Hold means whatever instrument you buy, you hold till maturity. That is your business model. Second is hold or trade. Whatever instrument you buy, you, you might either hold it or but if you get a better opportunity, you can think of selling it also. And the third uh, type of business model is trade. Whatever you buy, you always think of selling it in the near future. Okay, so these can be the three business models of the different companies. This is a entity specific test. You will check this thing for entity as a whole. Okay, now CCFC test. In short, known as Contract in short known as acha in big it is uh, short short form is already CCFC in big it is known as contractual cash flow characteristic test in short known as CCFC test. Now here there are only two outcomes possible, either it is met or not met, right? How do we come to know whether met or not? Simple. If from any financial asset we are only discussing about financial asset, okay? Do remember that part. If for any financial asset your motive is to earn only two types of cash flows, one is interest and one is principal. That means your intention is to earn only the promised cash flows. For example, if you invest in debentures, you will you are promised to get interest over the period, and at the end of maturity, you will get your principal back. So, if your intention is to earn only the promised cash flows, then CCFC is met. But if if your intention is to 
earn anything apart from what is promised. Like for example, you are thinking that I am investing in this instrument, but I will sell it in near future so that I, I can also earn some capital appreciation or some capital gain loss might arise, right? So if your intention is to earn anything apart from the promised cash flows, then CCFC will not be met, right? This instrument is, this test is instrument specific test. What is the meaning of instrument specific test? See business model, let's say for example, company has 10 types of investments. So this business model test is done for the company as a whole, right? But CCFC test, if the company has 10 different investments, this CCFC test will be done for individual investment. That is known as instrument specific test, right? Okay. So to understand this point further, we also discuss certain examples, whether these instruments will meet the CCFC or not, right? So out of this one important case was investment in equity shares. Whenever you invest in equity shares, in equity shares, there are no promised cash flows. Dividend is neither promised. The principal payment is not promised at any maturity, right? So under equity instruments, since you will never meet the CCFC test. Why? Because dividend is not promised, principal not promised. Right, right. If you want to recover anything, you will have to sell it. So here in equity shares, CCFC will never be met. Do remember that part, right? For debentures, it, it can meet, it can not meet. You can read the examples, you will understand. Okay, clear? Yes. So now we did two tests. Business model test done, CCFC test done. On the outcome of these two tests, we will come to know which method to use, right? For example, if your business model is hold and CCFC is also met, that means in business model as a whole, you say you are holding the instruments and CCFC, when you came to instrument specific test, it is also met. That means you are only there to earn the promised cash flow. That means you will not sell the instrument in short. Then they are recommending to use ACM method, amortized cost method. If the CCFC is not met in this case, use FETPL. Okay. If the model is hold or trade, but CCFC met, you will use FETOCIR. If the CCFC is not met, use FETPL. In the third case, when the business model itself is trading, no need to connect CCFC. In any of the cases, FE, FETPL is the only method. How to remember this? I'll give you a small hint. In the first two cases, whenever CCFC is not met, the by default method is FETPL. Okay, simple. In the third case, always FETPL. Now it is easy to remember. If the model was hold, CCFC met, ACM. If the model was dicey, hold or trade, but CCFC was meant, then FET, OCI, R. Okay, now, under these two cases, where they were recommending directly FETPL, there is also an alternative option given. Alternatively, the standard says, you can you can choose an irrevocable option to use FET, OCI, NR. Why is this option given? This is mainly given for investment in equity shares, where the CCFC is never met. So it is little harsh on the company to directly recommend for FETPL because in, if you use this, all the fair value changes will go in profit and loss. So little harsh for the company because if they have investment in equity shares, CCFC is never met. So instead of directly using FETPL, the company can choose. This is an irrevocable option to choose FET OCI and R. Okay, do remember that part. So this was business model and CCFC test. Just a basic idea if you have, that is more than sufficient. This was for financial asset. Now we come towards financial liability. For financial liability, we only have one method. That is ACM method. Do remember, there are no multiple methods. So if there is only one method, do we need to conduct any test for this, which method to use? The answer is no. If you are running in the race alone, you will only win. Na. So if for financial liability, there is only one method, then no need to conduct any kind of test. Right? Of course, in few cases, India says for financial liability, you will use FETPL. Those cases are defined like derivatives and financial guarantee. Those cases are specifically defined that for these particular cases use FETPL. That means for financial liability, all cases ACM, but for few cases FETPL. If anyone will ask you, just say that ACM is the only method. But yes, for few cases which are defined by India, we will use FETPL. Is this clear to everyone? Oh yeah. Okay, sir, done. Now, if you can see closely, there was one method which was common for financial asset also and for financial liability also. And that method was ACM, amortized cost method. So first we will learn the accounting under amortized cost method. From exam point of view also, this is the most important method, right? So under amortized cost method, what all things do we have to discuss? If you want, I will come towards this chart. Now see this closely. Under ACM method, see this ACM method is common for FA also for FL also, okay? We have total three cases to be discussed. One where fair value is equal to transaction price. I will teach you what is this. Second, where fair value is not equal to transaction price, 
दैट मीन्स दर इज द रिलेशनशिप समवेर इन्वॉल्व थर्ड केस इज कंपाउंड फाइनेंशियल इंस्ट्रूमेंट इन कंपाउंड फाइनेंशियल इंस्ट्रूमेंट ऑल्सो वी हैव थ्री केसेस विदाउट अ ट्रांजेक्शन कॉस्ट विथ अ ट्रांजेक्शन कॉस्ट एंड कन्वर्जन और अर्ली सेटलमेंट ऑफ कंपाउंड फाइनेंशियल इंस्ट्रूमेंट दीज आर द वेरियस केसेस देयर अंडर कंपाउंड फाइनेंशियल इंस्ट्रूमेंट सो दिस इज द एसीएम मेथड एज अ होल राइट सो दिस इज द मोस्ट इंपॉर्टेंट पार्ट नाउ लेट्स डिस्कस दिस एसीएम मेथड ओके सो नाउ हाउ द अकाउंटिंग इज डन सी आई शो इट टू यू वेट I have tried to simplify it for you in a in a very innovative way. You can say, see, directly come towards this part. Yes, India's accounting as per ACM method. Not going to the background. I also gave you some logic behind why do we follow this and everything. That is not required. But now directly come to the ACM method. Now one hint I am telling you, whatever method you follow, what is the full form of ACM? Amortized cost method. So by re by reading the name, we will we will think we have to record it cost. No, whatever method you follow. For financial asset or liability, on day one you will record at fair value only. That means even under ACM method, on day one the FA or FL is recorded at fair value. So, sir, what is the sense of naming this as amortized cost method? Because on year end you will keep it at amortized cost. On year end you will keep it at amortized cost. How do we calculate this? I will teach you. Don't worry. Now, as I said, for ACM you have to you have to record at fair value. Now the question is, how do we calculate the fair value? Right. so i have summarized this whole index into two categories if you can understand this it is going to be a boon for you right i can promise you no one will teach you like this right so what how do we calculate the fair value see if you fall under these three cases case number 1 case number 2 case number 3 if the question is belongs to from any of these three cases you will calculate the fair value that means let's let me read this out for you if there is any relationship between the two parties involved between the borrower between the lender if there is any relationship okay relationship means parent subsidiary less or lessy employer employee right so if there is any relationship between the borrower and the lender or if the instrument involved is a compound financial instrument or if the fair value is based on level 1 input what is the meaning of level 1 input we will study in another index that part as of now just certify this if the fair value is based on level 1 input so if you fall under any of the three cases you will calculate the fair value right that means for you the fair value will be equal to present value of future cash flows discounted at market rate of interest present value of future cash flows at eir eir full form of eir is effective interest rate i will also teach you what is eir don't worry okay this is the first case where you compute the fair value acha if there is a normal question where there is no relationship no compound financial instrument no fair value based on level 1 input that means the question is normal question in that case you will not compute the fair value you will assume the fair value sir how do we assume the fair value you will assume the fair value to be equal to your transaction price you will assume the fair value to be equal to your transaction price that means your fair value will be equal to the day one cash inflow outflow sir what is the meaning of transaction price to understand things better let's take one example okay so Uh, in my textbook you can find one example in case you remember i will i will show you one example don't worry so we had let's say example number this um this example number 2 okay you can read this example what do we say we say let's say ak limited invested in 10% debentures that means he invested it is a financial asset for him okay face value was rupees 50000 that these debentures are issued at premium of 10% okay and redeemed after 3 years at a premium of 15% calculate the value of investment okay now this is a normal question how do we solve this it is a case of financial asset we have to solve as per acm method in acm as of now when you read the question was there any relationship between the borrower lender no was it a cfi no is there anything mentioned about level 1 input no that means normal question you will assume the fair value whenever you assume the fair value there are four steps there are how many steps four steps first step cash flows step number 2 is finding the fair value step number 3 is effective interest that is eir step number 4 is lat remember four steps cash flows fair value eir lat okay now under cash flows what do we write just write like for example uh let me take a no okay this was the case example number 2 yeah, yes so let's say for example is a financial asset so under cash flows you will just write when it is a financial asset you will invest on day 1 so what is the outflow on day 1 and because you invested over the period you will keep on receiving the coupon and in, coupon and principal back so what is going to be an inflow 
just prepare a summary of the cash flows how much you will will you give how much will you receive right so i invested 55000 how come 55000 because i invested at a premium so face value plus premium this 55000 whatever is the inflow outflow on day 1 this is known as the transaction price do remember that part okay so i will let the cash flows so in this question it was uh, on day 1 i will invest over the period i will receive a coupon and then i will receive my principal repayment at a premium right this is my this is my step number 1 cash flows now step number 2 fair value of financial asset because there it is falling in neither of the three cases you will not compute the fair value you will assume the fair value assume the fair value to be equal to transaction price so your fair value in this case will be equal to the day one inflow outflow this is nothing but transaction price so that will be 55000 simple what about er what is er now see in this question the coupon rate was 10% right but can you see in this question there are some premiums also right on issue on redemption so this premium the standard says is nothing but interest only so you should not book the premium uh, on a specific date that premium should also be booked across the period same is the case with discount have you heard discount on debentures discount on uh, preference shares so whatever is the premium or discount these are not discount or premium effectively these are interest only so standard says your effective interest rate is a combination of coupon plus premium plus discount so combination of this is a effective interest rate that means your premium discount everything should be booked over the period and not on a specific date that is why we compute eir what is effectively your interest in this case why because see you are issuing at premium but you are redeeming at premium also that means on uh, receiving the principal back you are receiving little extra that extra is also nothing but interest only so what is effectively what you are earning so by interpolation you will solve this so we have already thought what is interpolation to find the eir just use the basic formula of fair value what was the fair value fair value is equal to present value of future cash flow at eir right fair value we assume to be the day one inflow outflow future cash flows already we have in the form of cash flow table right this we have to find so if there are three pointers in this whole formula two we already have fair value we assumed 55000 future cash flows we already have these are the future cash flows right so we want the eir so by using interpolation you will find the eir so you can assume any percentage you know interpolation right we will use interpolation and find the eir not getting into the basics of the interpolation now okay so you will find eir and then step number 4 is going to be lat loan amortization table how do we prepare it five columns are there year opening interest repayment closing now have a look carefully year 1 of course year end we are talking about first at the opening what was the opening on day 1 in opening don't at the face value write the fair value because the financial asset or liability is equal to that fair value so write the fair value here then you will take interest at the rate eir see what is eir this is effective interest rate ideally you are going to repay coupon back to the lender but effectively that coupon was not the effective interest effectively interest should have been the combination of coupon premium discount right so this eir the computation of eir the computation of interest is done as per eir how do you calculate this apply the eir on the fair value and not face value see coupon is applied always on face value eir is applied all, always on fair value right so you apply the eir rate on fair value you will get the interest this is the interest that you will book in the books of accounts then you will less repayment you will get the closing amount right this is how you do it okay so if you see effectively your total interest income is 17500 how come sir your coupon was only 5000 per annum that is 15000 but you also earned some premium at the end so combination of that total is nothing but your interest that is your eir effective interest rate right do remember that part so again how many steps are there just to summarize things for you four steps cash flows just a summary step number 2 fair value in this case we assume it third eir calculated if not given fourth is lat simple four steps cash flows fair value eir lat done how do we do the accounting simple because it is financial asset you will record debit the financial asset to cash bank always record the financial asset or financial liability at fair value do remember that part it is simple then you will book the interest the entry of interest is simple it is an income for you so your financial asset will increase first accrue the interest so you will say financial asset to interest income and then you will receive the repayment so you will say a uh, cash bank to financial asset you are receiving the repayment right if this was a financial liability interest would have been an expense for you repayment you will pay simple okay i hope this the basic stuff is clear to you so this was example number 2 then we came on towards one more case where we discussed about transaction cost where we discussed about transaction cost so 
what is the meaning of transaction cost let's say for example you are issuing some debentures so you will have to incur some processing charges also for issuing the debenture for raising the funds so that is nothing but transaction cost so if you incur any transaction cost what should be the treatment do not transfer this directly to profit and loss no 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 this transaction cost has been incurred for the whole instrument that means along with the interest even this transaction cost should be amortized over the period of loan how do we do it so this Transaction cost will also form part of your EIR, right? Effective interest rate. That means effective interest rate comprises of coupon, premium, discount, as well as transaction cost. Now, what do we do with the transaction cost on day one, which we have paid off? So, simple. In case of financial liability, you will less the transaction cost from the value of financial liability. Let's say, for example, in this example number three, we issued the debentures at a discount of 10%. That means you will receive only 90,000 inflow. Out of that also, you incurred 5,000 transaction cost. That means this transaction cost, you will first record cash bank to financial liability 90,000, fair value pay, right? Then the transaction cost do not transfer to PNL. You will pass the entry to cash bank because you are paying off the transaction cost and debit the financial liability. That means this financial liability is getting reduced by the amount of transaction cost. Now, why is it getting reduced, sir? I also gave you the basic logic about it. Expense always has a debit balance, but liability has a credit balance. So if you want to capitalize any expense in liability, it will be less from liability. Unlike asset, in case of asset, if we capitalize anything in asset, we add it to asset now. So in case of financial asset, you will add the transaction cost. But in case of financial liability, you will less the transaction cost from day one financial liability. Why are we adding or lessing, sir? Because we don't want to book this whole amount in profit and loss on day one. We want this amount to be a part of your EIR over the period. So when you adjust it with the fair value, then only it will form part of EIR. I'll, I will show it to you how. So step number one, cash flows. Okay, adjust this 5,000 from the fair value of financial liability. That means, that means when you prepare step two, fair value of financial liability. It is again, neither of the three cases. So you will assume the fair value. You will assume the fair value to be equal to transaction price of 90,000. But in case of financial liability, if there is any transaction cost, you will less it, right? So it will become 85,000. Now you will find the EIR. EIR again, same formula. You will use fair value is equal to present value of FCF at EIR. Now, when you take this fair value, you will take this fair value to be 85,000 and not 90,000. So as soon as you take 85,000 here, the EIR which you get in step number three will automatically account for the transaction cost as well. Right? Okay. So accordingly, we will prepare your LAT. You will get the amount of interest. This interest is including your uh, coupon, premium, discount or transaction cost also. Okay. Do remember that part. Everything is same. So in this case, in this example, what did we learn extra? We learned extra the amount of transaction cost, the treatment of transaction cost. In case of financial liability, you will less it on day one from financial liability. In case of in case of financial asset, if you can see, I also discussed from the point of view of financial asset. From point of view of financial asset, you will add it in the fair value of financial asset. So the summary is also given here. And again, I have also explained what is EIR. It is a combination of coupon interest, discount, premium and transaction cost. That is effective interest rate. Achha. What if in question there is no discount, no premium, no transaction cost? So in that case, if these three are not there, then can I say your coupon and ER are going to be the same? This is only valid from conceptual point of view. Is this clear to everyone? Yes, sir. Clear. So we studied this basic part. Now, these, this was the part where we are assuming the fair value, right? Based on this, we did two questions. As I promised you, I will also revise questions. So now I will revise question, illustration number 39. Can you see this illustration? I will just revise it. I'm not going to solve it word, word by word. This is a revision purpose, okay? But if you have studied it anytime soon, you will definitely recall it, okay? Don't worry. So what was given here? We have a financial liability here. Amounts are given, interest is given, but there is a transaction cost. First, tell me how to solve this now. They are asking us the accounting. So always remember whenever you see a question, four steps. What are the four steps? Step number one, cash flows. Step number two, uh, fair value. Step number three, EIR. Step number four, LAT. Okay. Cash flows, you will financial liability. So you will receive the cash flow on day one. Over the period, you will repay the coupon. You will repay the principal. So these were the cash flows. I wrote it down simply. Achha. But you also incur transaction cost. Right. So because of financial liability, you will add it or less it. Perfect answer. You will less this transition cost from the fair value of financial update step number two so fair value will be your transition price less your transaction cost that is 9500 right now eir will the coupon and eir be same the answer is no why because of transition cost your coupon is also there yet 
transition cost is also there. So it will be different. So calculate by the interpolation method. You will get the EIR. Then yes, prepare the LAT. You are through with it. Simple question. Done and dusted. This was illustration number 39. Now let's come on towards the illustration number 40. Now how do we solve illustration number 40? So what was there in 40? Let's read that uh, part first. Uh, this was illustration number 40. So here also we took a loan. Similar question. But there were some differences. What was the difference? Sir? First, we took a loan of 10,000. Transition cost was again 500, but the repayment is not happening in a very simple manner. So in the previous examples of questions, what we used to do, we used to repay the coupon, coupon, coupon in the initial years. And in the last year, we used to pay the whole principal. Here, what they are saying is, whatever loan you took of 10,000, the principal will get repaid in four equal installments. That means this 10,000 is not going to get repaid in one shot at the end. This will get repaid over the tenure and that also half yearly installments. That also half yearly instrument. That means if the tenure is two years, you will repay in first year. In first six months, you will repay this much. In next six months, you will repay this much. That is how it is happening. So the principal is getting repaid half yearly. And the best part is here, there is also coupon interest. But coupon interest is being charged and paid off quarterly. So the coupon payment happening quarterly, principal payment happening half yearly, right? But the best part is EIR here is not to be calculated based on your interpolation. It is given directly. Now, how to solve this question? Never take stress about such questions. It is simple. Just remember the steps. Sir, how many steps? Four steps. Cash flows, fair value, EIR, LAT. Achha. Fair value should we computer assume? Did I say there is any relationship or CFI or level one input? The answer is no. So we will assume the fair value. Okay. Now, how do I solve this? First step number one, cash flows. Okay. But cash flows, cash flows, step was very simple now directly write whatever you receive on day one and what are you going to pay over the period but whenever the principal is getting repaid in between only the cash flow table will not be very simple the cash flows will not be very simple likewise in 39 can i say we were only repaying the coupon and then at the end of fifth year we repaid the principal so the cash flows were very simple right so i had thought during class whenever principals are getting also repaid in between so in step number one an additional working note will be prepared in the name of cash flow table, right? Where you will uh, prepare the columns quarter or half or a year ended. Then you will add the face value, write the interest coupon and then calculate the repayment, right? Then you will get the closing. Please remember, this seem to be very similar to LAT, but this is not LAT. Why? This is a cash flow table. Here our motive is to calculate the cash flows happening in each half year or each quarter, which are not given directly, right? So that is why here in LAT, we used to take opening under fair value here we take the face value in LAT we book the interest as per EIR here we will calculate the interest as per coupon because our motive is to find the fair uh, motive is to find the cash flows right so I will write the face value write the coupon 12% per annum that means 3% per quarter repayment will happen of two things principal interest in the first quarter only interest will happen because interest is quarterly principal is half yearly so every half year you will also pay the interest and every quarter sorry every half year you will also pay the principal but every quarter you will also pay the interest this is how it will happen right so this repayment is the motive to prepare this working note number one so just one small small ofu always prepare this working note number one whenever principal is also paid in installment simple Okay, then step number two was fair value. It is simple. You have to assume it to be 10,000, but it is a financial liability and there was also some transition cost. So less it. So it will be 9,500. EIR, luckily it is given, but per annum it is given. This question is fully based on quarterly half yearly. So find it per quarter also. Then prepare the LAT. It is going to be very simple for you. Done. Is this clear to everyone? Yes. That means this was the basic funda, basic first part of your ACM method where we do not compute the fair value but we assume the fair value right is this clear till here then i can proceed further with the next part of acm method is this clear till here guys yes or no tell me very quickly yes perfect now the next part under our acm method is where there is a relationship between the borrower and the lender so what is the meaning of this that means the party who is taking the loan and the party who is giving the loan both are related Okay, <laughs> related means there might be some relationship of parent, subsidiary, employer, employee, for example, right? So whenever there is a relation, I already told you, if it falls under the three case, relationship, CFI or level one input, you will compute the fair value. That means here, your fair value will not be equal to your transition price. Here, you, your fair value will be equal to present value of future cash flows at EIR, right? Okay, now 
टू एक्सप्लेन दिस इन बेटर वे वी टू कम एक्साम्पल वेर आई सेट एके लिमिटेड ग्रांटेड लोन टू इट्स इंप्लॉइज मिसेज मू ओके ऑफ रुपीज टेन लैक्स एट द रेट फाइव परसेंट रिपेबल आफ्टर फाइव इयर्स प्रिंसिपल इज रिपेड आफ्टर फाइव इयर्स इंटरेस्ट चार्ज Uh, and paid annually. Market rate ten percent. Now, if you can see closely, I give the loan to my employee at five percent, but in market the rate is ten percent. Then why did I give the loan at a lower rate? Because there was some relationship. What was the relationship here of employer employee? Now, how do we solve this part? So here the steps will be common, four steps, but one additional step will be there. And why it will arise? I will also give you the logic. See closely. First step, you will add the cash flows, whatever is the inflow outflow. You will give a summary of it. Step number two. do we assume the fair value or compute the fair value very good answer you will compute the fair value sir why do you compute the fair value relationship is there so you will compute the fair value present value of future cash flows at eir that means whatever the future cash flows are there you will discount it at the rate of your eir okay so we discounted it you will get some answer 810460 i got the answer now look closely the loan amount which you gave to the employee was 10 lakhs but the fair value of financial asset is only 8 lakh like 10460 Now the issue is you gave the cash bank of ten lakhs. You recorded the financial asset at eight lakh ten four sixty. Some difference is arising. Some balancing figure will arise in the entry itself, right? Because the outflow is ten lakhs, but the recording value is eight lakh ten thousand four sixty. Because we record the FA and FA only at fair value. So what about the difference, sir? So the treatment of difference will be depending on the relationship. So here the relationship was employer employee. So very good answer. The company will treat this difference as a prepaid employee benefit expense. That means when the company gives benefit to its employee, the company will treat it like a prepaid employee benefit expense. Sir, why prepaid? Because the company gave the loan for five years. That means this this is an expense for the company for five years. If I want to give a logic behind this, what is this? One hundred and five forty. This is nothing but the foregone interest by the company in present value terms. This is the interest which the company could have earned by giving the loan to someone else, but because it gave the loan to its own employee, it has foregone this much interest. So this is the expense for the company, but not of day one of whole five years. So prepaid employee benefit expense. So what to do with this? Book this as a prepaid, then write off this over the period of five years through profit and loss. So P and L to prepaid will be the entry at each year end. That means when you calculated fair value. it was not same as your transaction price it was different than your transaction price so some difference arise na so that is the extra step here that is step number 3 so originally a step number 3 was eir but wherever you calculate the fair value there will be one extra step step number 3 that is difference between fair value and transaction price so here the difference was this much we discussed the treatment also then step number 4 eir step number 5 lat it is same one and the same okay <coughs> that means in case of relationship also if i want to summarize the steps not four but five steps cash flows fair value which you compute difference based on the relationship then eir then you will prepare the lat what will be the eir year the market rate of interest which was given will be the eir year right got it sir got it sir got it sir now we will also do some questions from your uh, lovey dovey module so what were the questions which were there so one question is illustration number 33 if you can see now here the uh, point is of security deposit do you know as a, as I already told in india study to revision the tenant will give the deposit to the owner tenant means lessee the deposit to whom it is given is the lessor so the tenant gives deposit to the lessee now this deposit can i say it is interest free when the tenant gives this deposit to the lessor it is interest free but let me tell you if this tenant would have invested this same amount somewhere else it would have got got a return of 12% then why did it give that deposit interest free because of the relationship of lessee lessor because they were in a relationship of rent agreement that is why the deposit was given for interest free right now how to account for this just read the question okay so the uh, deposit was interest free but in market the rate is 12% 5 years tenure simple how do we solve this so i already told the relationship is of lessor lessee from whose point of view the question will be asked mostly the question will be asked from the point of view of lessee right so for lessee day one he will give the deposits outflow over the period he will not receive any coupon he will only receive the principal back then second step fair value assume or compute relationship is there you will compute it right You computed the same. You got this value. Now, step number three: difference. There will be difference between the transaction price of ten lakhs and the day one's fair value, right? So, this difference, how to account for this? The lessee will treat it like a prepaid lease rent. It is just like because we have given the deposit, maybe the tenant must have charged us some less rent, right? So, this amount represents nothing but the foregone interest, which you have foregone just by 
making the deposit to your relationship wala party right so this is the amount of foregone interest which you will treat like a prepaid lease and because the relationship is of lease right what do you do with this over the period right of over the period of uh, lease term whatever is there right so step number three is difference step number four eir step number five lat prepare it simple done and dusted right okay sir then one next question was illustration number 116 here the relationship was a parent subsidiary i will not achha, if you want i will show you the question also how the question looks like um let me show it to you mm, yes here we go so here what was done was a limited issued redeemable preferences what is the meaning of redeemable redeemable means redeemed in cash who issued a issued to a holding company that means the one who is issuing issuing is the subsidiary the one to whom to whom it is issued he is the parent the one who issued for him it is a financial liability for holding it is a financial asset for whose point of view it is asked asked from the point of view of z limited that is a financial asset point of view parents point of view right so instrument was issued what was the dividend rate 0.0001 percent but what is the rate in the market 12 percent then how come the subsidiary issued these debentures at a lower dividend rate because of relationship because of parent subsidiary relationship right so the relationship is of parent subsidiary again how many steps five steps step one cash flows step two fair value you will compute the fair value step three difference now what will you account for the difference as if the relationship is of parent subsidiary where the parent is helping the subsidiary how come parent is helping because parent is giving the money to subsidiary at a lower dividend rate so parent is helping subsidiary whenever the parent helps subsidiary it is called a investment in subsidiary we already discussed the logic also behind this right so entry will be such on day one where you will record two cash bank 10 lakhs debit the financial asset whatever the loan you gave at a fair value the difference will be investment in subsidiary you will record this investment in subsidiary on day one on your end you will do nothing with this no writing of nothing just keep it at this value only okay step four ei yeah, step five validity prepare it pass the entries you are done through it simple Yes. Then there was illustration number 122, where the relationship was of employer employee. The question was very simple. Only one part was there, which if I uh, may make you read it, you will also come to know what was the important part. Wait, I will show it to you. Um, illustration number. Sorry, I uh, went little ahead. It was 122, I guess yes so here as a staff welfare company is giving loan to its employee at five percent okay but the critical part here was the repayment of principal will happen in five equal installments that means principal is getting repaid every year so whenever principal is getting repaid every year in step number one you will also prepare perfect answer working out number one right so that is the only new part here so under step number one for cash flow table in step number one you will also prepare a cash flow table where you will also take the principal repayment coupon repayment so this for this repayment i am preparing this table okay then step number two fair value you will discount all the repayments to find the fair value right then step number three again difference will come we already know when the company helps employee it is prepaid employee benefit expense right of over the period of five years step four eir step five validity okay then pass the entries you are through with it okay i also discussed an extra part here what if they ask us the balance sheet extract and profit and loss extract. Then in that case, at the end of year one, we have this much closing balance of financial asset. Where will it appear? Will it appear in current or non-current? So you will have to give the bifurcation. Some part of this, this is the closing on year one end. Some part of it is non-current. Some part of it is current. How do I get the difference? So I gave you one simple uh, trick to follow. Whatever the difference between year one closing and year two closing will be the current amount. So for example, let's say this was a total amount out of this total amount. The difference between year one and year two will be current amount and the balancing figure will be non-current amount. So also you can remember like this, whatever is the immediate next year's closing balance, that is a non-current amount. Difference is current amount. Any, any ways you can take, right? So I've also given the calculation here, right? So you will bifurcate between current and non-current. Same logic applies for the prepaid part as well the prepaid part is there you write off over the period of five years so one fifth amount you must have written off the balance amount will still be appearing here if you want to see the balance amount will still appear at the end of year one so this full amount is not non-current some of it is non-current some of it is current so just take the difference of year one and year two that is current balancing figure is non-current right <coughs> of course practice it you will come to know now one more important thing i just want to tell you is bifurcation of loan between current and non-current what ICA has done is whenever along with the interest, 
whenever even principal is getting repaid every year at that time they will do the bifurcation of current non current but what if in this question it was a normal question where principal was not getting repaid every year where only coupon was getting repaid and the principal got repaid at the end if that was the case here where the principal is not getting repaid every year in that case what icai does is they take the whole closing under non current they will not give the bifurcation under current non current that means again to summarize if principal is getting also repaid every year he will bifurcate the closing between current non current but if only coupon is getting repaid every year principal is not getting repaid but it will get repaid at the end of fifth year that means the closing full will be non current only no bifurcation required this note i have also given here just remember that part a similar question is there question number 4 that is also important but you can try it on your own it is exactly same like one question number 122 right so this uh, part of relationship is done then i also gave you a summary of relationship and the accounting treatment like we discussed for employer employee it is the differences prepaid employee benefit expense for lessee less or the differences prepaid lease rent for parent subsidy it is the differences interest in subsidy right so i gave you a summary of all this now let's discuss the summary of the relationship quickly so the first summary of relationship talks about what if lessor and lessee relationship is there right so how to treat the difference amount for lessee So let's see. We'll call the difference amount as prepaid lease rent. And what to do with this prepaid lease rent on year end? Write off over the period of the uh, rent agreement or the deposit amount. That is in our case, it was five years. Write off over five years. Acha. We discuss from lessee's point of view. But what about lesser? Generally, question is not asked from lessor's point of view. But by chance, if it comes for lesser, the deposit was financial liability. So difference will come on the credit side. So if the lessee was treating the difference as prepaid lease rent. lessor will treat it like a advance lease income advance income and such advance income will be written off through pnr over the period of 5 years simple but there is no question from lessor point of view to be honest okay the next relationship was of parent subsidiary where the parent is helping the subsidiary so as we already discussed for parent the difference will be investment in subsidiary what about subsidiary when the parent receives help from uh, when the parent gives help to subsidiary that is when the subsidiary is receiving any help for subsidiary this loan was a financial liability so difference will also come on liability side so subsidiary will call the difference as capital contribution from parent what is the logic behind this just imagine now for example your parents are helping you so parent your parents won't say that we are expensing the money on our child they will say we are investing on our child similarly the child will not say i am receiving any money from parent they will say i am receiving capital contribution from my parent simple right okay our rare case also there where they say what if subsidiary helps the parent what if subsidiary gives the loan to parent in the above case what was happening parent was helping subsidiary but what if subsidiary is helping parent subsidiary gives loan to the parent then what will happen sir in that case when subsidiary helps the parent for subsidiary is a financial asset difference will come on the debit side so now subsidiary will not say investment in parent no subsidiary will say dividend distribution right likewise the difference for parent will be dividend income sir why so just imagine now whenever uh, let's say for example you become a chartered accountant now you start giving back uh, you start helping to your parents so will your parents say that uh, i am receiving uh, investment from my sons no will you say i am investing my parent no when you become a ca when you start helping your parents what will you say i am giving the returns of what my parents had put in that means you are distributing dividend similarly what will parents say parents will say we are receiving the dividend income of what we invested in past right you you will not say by helping a parent i am investing my parent subsidiary never invest in parent na subsidiary will give returns to the parent okay logically clear sir oh yeah okay sir <laughs> let's proceed uh, then the next point was what if the employer helps employee for generally question comes from employer's point of view employer will say prepaid employee benefit expense at of over the period of 5 years what if it comes from employee's point of view never asked but if it comes you will say it is advance salary okay there is also one more case what if government helps a company right so it it this case will be discussed in detail in india's 20 that is government grant okay still telling you if the government is helping the company in that case for company by how will the government help by giving a subsidized loan to the pay, uh, to the company the government provides a loan to the company at a very low interest rate compared to the market rate so for company it is a liability difference will come on the credit side that difference will be treated like a government grant how to account for this will be discussed in index 20 don't worry about it 
so this was the summary of uh, relationship which i have prepared uh, done a lot of effort by giving the differences through journal entry so that you can remember it very effectively for exam as well right okay then we also did one illustration number 36 i will show that illustration to you as well uh, one sec yes <coughs> illustration number 36 what was there in this question a very good question from exam point of view please do read this okay it says company provides a loan to the subsidiary that means parent gives loan to subsidiary that means parent is helping subsidiary interest free loan okay then three cases are there they are asking the accounting in the individual books and also in the cfs Achha. three cases are there first case loan is repayable on demand now what is the meaning of repayable on demand demand means whenever parent will ask for the money then only subsidiary will repay otherwise no repayment is required right so because there is a relationship here normally what do we do because there is a relationship, we will compute the fair value. But in case number one, to compute the fair value, what we require? Present value of future cash flow, that EIR. We don't have future cash flows because the repayment schedule is not fixed. Tenure is not given. How many years repayment will happen? Because the repayable on demand, right? EIR is also not given. So by default, you cannot calculate the fair value. So in this case, by default, even if there is a relation, you will have to assume because there is no other option left. So you will assume because you are assuming difference will not arise okay in case two all our problems are solved tenure is given market it is given okay so in that case in case number two you have the tenure so if you have the tenure you know the future cash flows because the coupon is going to be nothing but the principal repayment will happen at the end of the third year right year you have already so uh, you can find the fair value now you will compute the fair value difference will arise for parent the difference will be investment in subsidiary for subsidiary the difference will be capital contribution from parent step number four is yeah step number five LAT, pass the entries done through this there was also case number c it says the loan is repayable when abc has funds to repay the loan the question says you will find it very similar to a a says loan is repayable on demand but c says loan is repayable when abc has funds they both are they are not the same we say, nah, we are not the same, bro. Case C and case A are not the same. Why? In case A, the payment will happen when the parent demands for it. In case C, the payment will happen when subsidiary wants to repay. So, the standard says here, because there is no tenure, there is no rate, wagera, so the standard has given just a 2-3 line theory solution for this. You just need to read that part. What does it say that? It says case C is not same as case A. So in case C, the company will have to estimate the repayment schedule, the ER and everything and do the measure accordingly like we did in scenario B. So just remember this three line theory part. Okay. That was case C. Achha, they had also asked what will be the treatment in CFS. So in CFS, it is an intercompany transaction. Everything gets eliminated. No treatment in CFS. Simple. Okay. Done, sir. There was also a similar case question number eight of MTB RTB past exam. Exactly same question. But only two points were different. In case two, if we find the fair value, we will get the amount as this much. But in question, already fair value is given. Which one to take? If in question fair value is given, always use the fair value of question. Okay. I have already discussed this. That was the only difference part. Second thing different was in question number eight was that also asked what if instead of parent helping subsidiary, what if subsidiary was helping parent? So can I say already discussed it in the summary part? If subsidiary helps parent, the difference will be dividend distribution for subsidiary and for parent it will be dividend income simple amounts are not given only this theory you have to write that's it in question number eight okay done so this was the relationship wala part right we are through with this let's proceed further with our revision the next point is what if the fair value is based on level one input now what is the meaning of level one input that we will understand in index 113 as of now just you for this just remember as of now right so if you haven't studied index 113 it's fine just remember if the question says fair value is based on level one input so can i say here also you will compute the fair value right in three cases we compute right relationship cfi and level one input in these three cases we compute the fair value so here just remember two points one you will compute the fair value same formula present value of future cash eir second the difference irrespective of in relationship will be directly transferred to profit and loss difference between what because you will compute the fair value can i say there will be some difference between the transition price and fair value such difference directly transfer to profit and loss that means if i want to give the step summary again five steps only cash flow fair value computed difference 
will arise but directly transfer to profit and loss eir lat done okay there were two questions first question is illustration number 29 okay let me revise that illustration for you as well um, one sec yeah in this uh, question was given question of security deposit again relationship of lessee lessor but i gave you two scenarios first scenario assume that a fair value was based on level one input and second scenario assume there was a relationship between less or lessee so in the first scenario you will solve as per five steps step number one two three four five all are same under both the cases or all, all five are the same under scenario one and scenario two the only difference that will arise is in step number three if you say that the fair value is based on level one input difference will be transferred to profit and loss if you say the fair value is not based on level one input then you will treat the difference based on relationship that is you will treat the difference as prepaid lease rent because the relationship was of uh, less or lessee simple that's it nothing else in this question similar question is there question number four where also i made you write that assume the fair value is based on level one input right so that part was missing in the question but i made you assume it right this part was missing in the question but i made you assume it because it is impliedly assumed in the solution right so i made you assume it that assume that what if the fair value is based on level one input accordingly we will solve it right Achai, was it question number four i guess the question number was not four let me just check let me just verify um i it was not four wait 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 it's what it was question number 12 i guess if i'm not wrong yes it was it should be question number 12 okay so that was question number 12 very simple question if you read on your own you will come to know it is very simple in that also i made you write that assume the fair value is based on level by input ideally it should be written in the question but they have assumed the same in the solution so i made you write in the question only so in that case again five steps the difference will be transferred to profit and close that's it done 12 12 it should be 12 yes perfect then let's proceed further so this was level one input so normal acm question where we assume the fair value done relationship wala part done level one input done now we come towards cfi compound financial instrument now what is the meaning of compound financial instrument that we already discussed an instrument where we have both the elements we have the element of fl also we have the element of equity also right and we all already know cfi can only be from the point of view of issuer for holder it is a financial asset so cfi concept only exists from the point of view of issuer now to understand this in a better way we already have some examples in our textbook we will look, have a look at those examples the first part was for compound financial instrument example was given ak issued 10 percent debentures for face value redeemable or convertible but the market rate is 14 percent that means coupon is 10 percent market is 14 percent okay case a option to convert is with the holder now have a look here if the option is with the holder can i say interest anyways fl principal because holder has the option can i say issuer at its own will cannot avoid paying cash so principal will also be fl so if we say interest and principal we will call it a normal financial liability but here comes a twist if you see closely the coupon was only 10 percent but the rate in the market is 14 percent now why will my holders accept a lower rate debenture why will my holders accept a lower coupon rate debenture when they can earn 14 percent in the market because i am giving them a conversion option as well along with the normal debenture i am giving them debentures with the conversion option that is why they are accepting that means why was the company able to save this interest was it because of the relationship no the company was able to save the interest because they were giving the conversion option along with the normal debenture right so this savings part is the equity component so ideally an instrument which is convertible does not have two elements it has three elements interest principal and savings part why this savings part is equity component because this savings was only possible because the issuing company gave conversion option along with the normal instrument right so if you have two elements fl but little element equity this becomes a cfi this was only for your clarity point of view if it is cfi again do you assume the fair value or compute the fair value you will compute the fair value how many steps we have same five steps step one cash flows step two fair value of financial liability you will compute it same formula present value of future cash at eir now what about the difference because it was a cfi cfi means little fl little equity so here in cfi the difference will be treated like a equity will be treated like a equity component so step number one cash flows step number two fair value step number three equity right okay then we proceed with step number four that is eir Okay, step number five, LAT. LAT will prepare for financial liability. Simple. Clear with this part. That means 
वॉट एवर कन्वर्टेबल इंस्ट्रूमेंट्स यू इशू इवन इफ द ऑप्शन विद द होल्डर स्टिल इट बिकम सी एफ आई वाई बिकॉज इंटरेस्ट वॉज एफ एल प्रिंसिपल वॉज एफ एल बट सेविंग्स वॉज इक्विटी ओके एंड इन सी एफ आई जस्ट रिमेम्बर वन एक्स्ट्रा थिंग द डिफरेंस अमाउंट इज गोइंग टू बी इक्विटी कॉम्पोनेंट सो कैन एस ए रिलेशनशिप लेवल वन इनपुट एंड सी एफ आई ऑल हैव फाइव स्टेप्स द ओनली डिफरेंस कम्स इन स्टेप नंबर थ्री इन केस ऑफ रिलेशनशिप questions we treat the difference based on relationship in case of level 1 input we treat the difference we transfer the difference to profit and loss directly in case of cfi we treat the difference as equity component this is how i have simplified the financial instruments for you right can you imagine yes. okay sir now i also gave uh, this part where if it is a cfi what will happen at the end see so for example you prepare your lat now you will not get the closing as nil because we don't know what the holder will choose so i will not make the principal repayment i will keep it as it is so my closing will come to the principal amount 25 lakhs now at the end of fifth year holder can either choose cash so if he chooses cash i have the liability outstanding 25 lakhs i will pay it off equity component will be transferred to retained earnings okay but what if the holder chooses equity option in that case your fl is no longer required transfer the fl to equity component and issue your equity shares this is one way of doing it other way can be directly reverse the fl directly reverse the equity and issue your equity shares there is another way of doing it ultimately the net effect is same in all the cases okay this was the case number 1 where option with, was with the holder now comes the important part case b where option to convert is with the issuer of the instrument now if the option is with the issuer in that case interest is fl but principal becomes equity why because issuer at its own will can avoid paying cash now savings in interest is also already equity so interest fl principal equity savings in interest equity so again it is a cfi how to account for this now comes the very important part please pay attention here whenever you prepare step number 1 cash flows you will only take the mandatory cash so what is the meaning of this sir? that means principal for you was equity na you called the principal equity that means principal repayment will not form part of your cash flows why because you never assumed we 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 told principal equity that means under principal we are assuming there is no contractual obligation so you will not take the cash flow of principal repayment that means whenever any element you assume it to be equity it will not form part of your cash flows simple right so accordingly you will calculate the uh, step number 2 fair value step number 3 equity if you see the amount of equity has drastically increased the amount of fl of fair value has decreased amount of equity increased drastically why the reason was because your principal also equity now so your financial liability will only have the fair value of your coupon payments right that's it. that is the reason anyways then step number 4 and 5 are ultimately the same here without even making the principal repayment it the closing balance of lat comes to zero why sir because principal you never assume it to be fl principal you never assume it to be fl so even before making the principal repayment this will come to zero now what will happen at the end of fifth year see if the issuer now issuer can pay cash also now in exceptional cases if the issuer pays cash of course we did not account for the cash so in that case you will give the cash from equity component if anything is left over you will bring that amount from retained earnings okay what if the issuer give shares you will transfer the whole equity component to capital to premium that's it simple right okay then we did illustration number 126 that you can do in homework simple question is there and question number 13 also we did it is a, it is a simple question now okay now we come towards the important part that is compound acha one more thing in illustration number 126 if you read this question they have given that it is a convertible instrument but who has the option for conversion it is it is not mentioned so whenever option to convert is missing who has the option is missing always assume that option is with the holder of the instrument always assume that right also in this illustration 126 only coupon is paid principal will get repaid one shot at the end so if they ask the balance sheet extract for you if they ask the balance sheet extract whole amount will be shown only under non current as i said do you remember if the principal is not getting repaid whole non current do remember that part okay now comes the googly googly means uh, you can say na twist in turn where there is a compound financial instrument with transaction cost oh yeah that means a cfi Involving transaction cost also. Now, what is to be done here? Simple steps to be followed, right? What is to be done? Please have a look. I I gave an example in that uh, textbook. We have example number five, where we say there is a normal instrument of eighty thousand three years, but we also incur transaction cost of two thousand. How to solve these types of questions? Do you remember? For first four steps, assume there is no transaction cost. So my interest was FL, my principal was FL. 
okay because option will be the holder so i assume there is no transaction cost so i solved step number one cash flows step number two fl step number three equity component step number four eir done now the transaction cost to incurred of 2000 was it incurred only for fl was it incurred only for equity or it was incurred for the whole instrument it was incurred for the whole instrument that means this 2000 is incurred for the whole cfi it is incurred for the whole compound financial instrument so this 2000 has to be allocated between fl and equity now how will you allocate it in the ratio of this fair value so that is my step number five extra step you will allocate the transition cost to fl and equity right so you will allocate it now what to do with this so whenever you allocate transition cost to fl it reduces the value of fl because fl has a credit balance this has a debit balance so reduce it whenever you allocate tc to equity you will again reduce it from equity why equity again has a credit balance this tc has a debit balance so reduce it so after allocating the transition cost the fair value of fl and fair value of equity will be reduced because the fair value is reduced your eir will change right so that is my one more new steps so two new steps are there here in case of cfi with transition cost the first new step is allocation of tc to fl and equity and the second new step is calculating the new eir in my example i had thought you how to calculate the eir but of course in the question given in the module it is already given the new eir including the effect of tc so two eirs are given one is old eir which will be used to calculate the fair value given above uh, fair value of fl before tc and then the new eir which was given after the effect of tc will be used to prepare lat we already discussed all these things do remember that part that means now i also gave you a summary a exclusive fr with an exclusive summary for two types of questions one cfi where there is no transition cost so only five steps cash flow fair value difference that is equity er lat then cfi with a transition cost how many steps seven steps because two steps are extra so first cash flow fair value difference and old ir see here when you are calculating the fair value use the old ir only okay then calculate the difference that is equity then write the old ir these four steps are common now because there was transition cost allocate the tc between these two steps in the ratio of these two steps and find the revised fair value then step number six new er after transition cost will already be given then prepare the lat lat will prepare using the new eir now one illustration 121 was given we will discuss that illustration a very good illustration a good candidate from exam point of view always uh, do that question and go okay uh, wait i will also show you that question here it is see now if you see clearly what is mentioned here abc company issued 10000 compulsory convertible preference shares now this changes the game because the instrument is compulsory convertible so if you see interest is fl but because it is compulsory convertible principal is equity savings will be equity right because principal is equity do you remember now if any element is equity it will not form part of your cash flows right so year zero year one to five and fifth year end it will be zero why because principal will not form part of your cash flows do remember maximum students will make mistake here okay step number two fair value will get step number three there will be equity component if you read the question wholly and solely it is given that 30,000 was our transition cost. So now this 30,000 has to be allocated between FL and equity. I will allocate between FL and equity in this ratio, in the ratio of step number two and step number three. I will get this value. Now, as soon as you allocate, the fair value of our FL and equity both will decrease by this allocation. So we decreased it. Right? Then we want the new EIR. See, for calculating the old fair values, I used 15%. I use 15%. But while preparing LAT, I will use the new ER, 15.86%. When two ERs are given, it is so obvious now that the old one will be the first one and the after TC wala effect ER will be the new one, right? Will be given below. Okay. So I wrote the new ER already given in the question. Then we'll prepare LAT. Now while preparing LAT, two mistakes you will make. First, when you take the fair value, which fair value do I take? Do I take the fair value of step number two? Or will I take the fair value after allocating transition cost so always take the fair value after allocating the transition cost first thing second thing when you take the eir in lat always take the new eir don't take the old eir please remember this part okay yes then we pass the entries and it is through so it is a simple part so this was the case where it is a cfi with a transition cost before i move forward please remember 
when you are revising these questions with me this should act as a support to you this should not be a replacement of writing practice some of you might do sir you revised it done sir no need to write and practice no no this is not a replacement of writing practice guys so this is helpful just to keep you in touch just so that you cannot make any mistakes and wherever you are stuck you will come to know acha ha sir i told this but of course writing practice is a must in each and every case okay okay sir let's proceed further next point is compound financial instrument right now under compound financial instrument one more case is there early settlement by way of payment of cash early settlement by payment of cash that means let's say for example our original tenure was 5 years but we settled the cfi in third year only by making payment in cash so how do we do it so we have question number 1 uh, to understand this concept so we will read the question number 1 and along with that we will try to understand what is there in this part okay come so it is mentioned that question number 1 uh on 1st april 19 shelter limited issued 5008% debentures maturing on 31st march 24 that is the tenure was of 5 years okay so it is convertible at the option of the holder so it is a normal cfi interest fl principal will be fl because option is with the holder savings and in interest will be equity sir why always savings in equity because it is a convertible instrument no? so savings in equity okay do remember so follow normal steps step number 1 that is cash flow step number 2 fair value step number 3 equity step number 4 yes step number 5 lat lat i did not prepare for the whole 5 years why because in mid only i came to know in the at the end of third year only we decided to make a payment of 5 lakh 25000 and settle this whole cfi this we did not know on day 1 so originally when we were calculating the fair values and everything we took the tenure as 5 years only but when we are preparing lat that time we came to know that we are settling it early right so at the end of third year you are settling it so the first part of the question is very simple just solve the normal cfi right then the second part of the question where you are settling it on a early basis just try to see on the date of settlement what was the amount of equity what was the amount of fl so fl amount you will get by preparing lat equity amount it will stay the same as it was on day 1 so if i say on the date of early settlement these were my values of equity this was my value of fl clear okay how much payment am i making i am making the payment of 525000 okay now out of this 525000 do not pass direct entry or do not reverse the fl equity and say to cash bank to pnl no this is wrong this is now how you do it this is not to do it not the way to do it not not to do it not the way to do it right okay how do we do it then in that case sir the payment of 525000 should be bifurcated between fl and equity right how do we bifurcate this do not bifurcate in the ratio of carrying amount no you will bifurcate in the ratio of fair value right how why do we do it sir in case you remember my example let's say for example i am selling iphone and calculator to ajay right the carrying value is this much but the fair value is let's say 21000 and 4000 so how much will i demand from ajay i will demand from ajay 25000 based on the fair value now whenever i am selling anything i will not see what is the carrying amount in my books i will see what is the fair value in my books accordingly i will sell it to ajay so I will demand 25,000. And if I ask you, out of 25,000, how much did Ajay pay for iPhone? So you will not say bifurcate in the ratio of carrying amount. You will say Ajay paid 21,000 for iPhone, Ajay paid 4,000 for calculator. Simple calculation. That means whenever you are settling or selling anything, the payment will bifurcate it between these two elements in the ratio of fair value. But the question is, we don't have the fair value. You will have to compute it. So out of 25,000, just imagine how much did you pay for FL? You will have to calculate the revised fair value of FL. Calculation is given here. It is simple. The day you are standing is 1422. Just see what are the remaining cash flows. The formula is very simple. Present value of, we take present value of future cash flows. Just add one word. Present value of remaining future cash flows. The day you are settling, after that, how much were the remaining future cash flows? So these were my remaining future cash flows. Just bring them to the present value and the new EIR was also given in the question. New EIR means EIR on the date of early settlement. Use that new EIR and find the fair value. That means the formula for fair value remains the same. Just take the remaining cash flows after the settlement date and take the new EIR. You will get the fair value. That means out of 5 lakh 25,000, this much amount, whatever is the fair value of FL, this much amount you are paying for FL. So balance amount you will pay for equity. Now, Whatever you paid for FL, pass two different entries for both these elements, okay? Whatever you paid for FL, you will say to cash bank, the amount paid. FL will go out at carrying amount only. That means when you say FL to cash bank, the amount of FL 
is going out, it will go out at carrying amount, but the payment made is excess. Difference transferred to profit and loss. In case of equity, whenever you are settling any equity element, you made this much payment, equity amount will go out at carrying amount, the balancing figure will be transferred to retained earnings. See, whenever you are settling any equity element, the difference will also be transferred within other equity only. But whenever you are settling in a liability element, the difference will be transferred to profit and loss. This early settlement point is very important. You might find it tricky on the face of it, but it is very simple. If I want to simplify it, see, can I say the first part of the question is basic calculation. Under second part, just need to calculate whatever payment you made. How much payment did you make for each of the element? Just find one fair value, fair value of FL, revised fair value of FL. If you find this, everything is simple now. If you find this fair value, this much payment you made for FL, balance for equity. Pass the entries, whatever you paid, write to cash bank. FL will go out at carrying amount, difference, profit and loss. Whatever you paid for equity, write to cash bank. Equity will go out at carrying amount, difference, retained earnings. Simple, done understood. Likewise, we also did one more question, illustration 84 and 86, continuation question. Same like what just the question we just discussed. Okay, so you can refer it in for practice also. Then we did illustration 117. What is 117? It is a classic question again. It has also come in exam. Uh, so it is a good question. I will discuss that question with you as well. What does it say? It says we have convertible bonds, convertible bonds. But maximum students got confused because it is not mentioned whether it is compulsory convertible or conversion option with the holder option with the issuer. Not mentioned anywhere. You know where was it mentioned? It was mentioned here in the C part that the holders have the option. Mostly questions read this and they were not able to interpret who has the conversion option. Why? Because who has the option will change the solution. Na? If you assume option is with the issuer, then principle will be equity for you. Then the fair value of FL will be different. Fair value of equity will be different. Right? But if you assume holders have the option of conversion, then principle will be FL. Right? So that was the mistake part. Okay. So what was there in this? Coupon rate is given. ER is given. Okay. They want us to pass the entries uh, for day for year one. They also want us to calculate the uh, stream of interest expense for the whole tenure. That is eight years. How will I get this? Prepare the LAT. You will get this. One extra part was there. That is, what if the holders elect to convert at the end of third year only? That is early conversion they want to opt for. So normal question. Just, just say interest FL, principal FL, savings equity. It is a CFI. Cash flows, fair value, equity, ER and LAT will prepare. Okay, simple. For part C of the question, where they are doing early conversion. So you will say, sir, again, find the fair value of two elements. No, early settlement is different. Early conversion is different. The early settlement point where we discussed previously, it was settled early in cash. The file at 25,000 payment was made in cash. That is where you follow the above method. When the early conversion is into shares, when the early conversion is happening into shares, in that case, no need to calculate the bifurcation of how much for FL, how much for equity. No. Whatever is the value of FL on that date, reverse it. Whatever is the value of equity on that date, reverse it. Transfer it to equity share capital. Simple. You will understand this once you try to solve it. Of course. Okay. Illustration number 125. Normal question. You can try in homework. That is fine. You can revise in homework basically. Okay. So this was the whole concept of CFI. Can, can I say, have you understood the concept of CFI guys? Can you tell me yes or no, please? It is very much required guys. Also the ones who are watching recorded comment section is yours. Did you understand till CFI? So if I tell you now, in maximum cases, 50% chapter is done till year. And one question definitely appears. I will also revise one more point here. Don't worry. But have you understood till here? Yes. So if I uh, got to show you how much have we covered, index 32 completely done, right? Index 109, how much we have done? This, this, this. And under ACM method, full, full ACM method done. Can you see this? Where we assume the fair value, where we calculate the fair value, where we calculate the fair value in CFI, level one input is done. In CFI also, all three cases done without transition cost, with a transition cost, conversion or early settlement of CFI, everything done till here. Right? Yes. And can I say, I have tried to simplify, simplify it for you by giving the steps. Yes. Okay. One more point we can discuss is this. What about other methods? We discussed ACM. But what about other methods that will hardly take a span of, let's say, five minutes. Other methods are not very important compared to ACM. But yes, they are there. Not much questions also on that part. But we will revise. Let's give it another five minutes so that we can complete the revision of that other part as well. Okay, come. We will revise it quickly. Um, Just give me a moment. Yeah, we were here. Yes. So now we, move, we are moving forward with the other methods. ACM, we already know. If I want to summarize ACM, 
on day one we recorded fair value right fair value for fa is fair value plus tc for fl it is fair value minus tc tc means transaction cost on year end we recorded amortized cost sir what is amortized cost you did not tell whatever is the closing balance of lat it is amortized cost right so your fa or fl stays at this value on year end stays at this value on year end that is amortized cost okay okay sir let's proceed now what about other methods fair value method now we have more methods left for that is fvt oci rnr this methods are only there in financial asset fvt pl it is there in financial asset and financial liability both right acha in fvt oci rnr also on day one you recorded fair value plus tc but if it is fvt pl you only recorded fair value so what about tc tc is not capitalized it is really transferred to profit and loss okay <coughs> then subsequent measurement for financial asset under all methods so for financial asset from initial measurement to subsequent measurement everything i have tried to put in one chart we have four methods for financial asset acm fvt oci r fvt oci nr fvt pl acha i will just give you a quick overview will not spend much time on this because not very critical from exam point of view just give it a go through and just uh, complete it quick revision starts now first method by method we are going acm method initially recorded f fair value plus tc that is the that is tc is getting added to fair value why because you want to capitalize it and uh, book it over the period of loan that is why by way of eir okay subsequent measurement in acm method happening at amortized cost interest dividend that is the column of eir you prepare lat na in lat what where do the er get transferred it gets transferred to profit and loss right unrealized gain runs or realized gain loss cannot arise because here your motive is to only hold till maturity so this cannot arise okay acm method done now fvt oci r now if it is fvt oci r initial measurement same fair value plus tc tc you will add to fair value subsequent measurement method name itself suggest fair value through oci that means subsequent measurement will be done at fair value and the fair value changes the unrealized fair value changes will be transferred to oci r so unrealized gain loss transferred to oci r sir what about the realized interest realized gain loss so the realized dividend interest income and the realized gain loss will be transferred to profit and loss always remember whichever method you use if you book any realized gain loss always profit and loss this oci r nr is only relevant for the unrealized portion okay okay and realized gain loss will arise when you sell the asset okay so if you sell the asset because it was oci r what to do with the old balance of oci r so if it is oci r you will have to reclassify the uh, profit booked in oci r to pnl because the full form of oci r is r means reclassified to pnl that means when this financial instrument is going out of your books at that time the whole balance whatever booked in oci r across the years will be reclassified to pnl to remember that the difference between r and nr is only that in nr in nr when the financial asset is going out of your books the difference will not be reclassified to pnl it will be only transferred within other equity what about fvtpl in fvtpl it is very simple name suggest book at fair value and whatever is the difference realized or unrealized transfer in profit and loss so that is what we do we book at fair value whatever is the difference transfer in profit and loss simple right okay uh, also give you an ofu that whatever method you are using realized gain loss always profit and loss to remember that acha what about measurement for financial liabilities for financial liability we don't have four methods we have only two methods maximum case acm in few cases fvtpl so if you are using acm then you will record at fair value less transaction cost subsequent measurement at amortized cost interest whatever you get it will be profit and loss if you are using fvtpl book at fair value and everything else will go in profit and loss simple right now initial and subsequent measurement for equity elements right just remember equity are like our owners whenever we call anyone an equity transaction it is like our transaction with the owner whenever you do any transaction with the owner whatever gain loss or difference arises never transfer it to profit and loss always adjust within equity for example whenever you pay any dividend to your equity owners will you say that i have expensed out the dividend no we say it is appropriation of profit that means whenever you receive anything from equity or you pay anything to equity it is an equity element always adjust it within other equity i will give a demonstration also just have a look at it let's say initial measurement initial measurement for equity happens at word value in case of cfi we book at a balancing figure right because equity element how do we get difference between transaction price and fair value that is how we get equity if you incur in transaction cost we less from equity because equity has a credit balance tc has a debit balance so less it 
Subsequent measurement, it is never remeasured. It's rather day one amount. Okay. What if you pay in a dividend? It is appropriation of profit. Le you will deduct your reserves, not your profit and loss. Acha. What if any gain loss arises on settling the equity element transferred within other equity? Classic example was early settlement of CFI. When you were settling the equity element, you transfer the difference to retained earnings. Remember. So any realized unjust gain losses transferred within other equity only. Do remember that part. I also discussed one OFO. Sir, whatever we give to preferential as dividend in the name of dividend, whether the dividend paid to preferential will go in profit and loss or with another equity. So if the preferential classified as FL, then whatever dividend you pay, it is an expense for you. But if the preferential are equity, then whatever dividend you pay, it is other equity. So what if it is a CFI? In CFI, when you cal when you prepare the LAT, you calculate the effective interest rate on the fair value of financial liability. That means whatever EIR is applied, it is applied on financial liability. So in CFI, whatever dividend you pay, it is paid on the liability portion. So it will be a, it will go in profit and loss. Do remember that part. Then we did uh, one question, question number two that you can try in homework. It is a very simple question solution I have attached here itself. Um, question number 10. Question number 10 is there. Again, not a LDR question. You can try in homework. See, the, the question which are not LDR now, we will not waste time in revising them. If you try it on your own, you, you will be able to revise it. Achha, there was one question number 17 that I will that I surely want to revise it with you. Okay, come. Question number 17. See, whenever I say illustration, illustration means question of module. Whenever I say question, question means MTP, RTP section. In my book, I have two sections. One section is of the questions of module. Second section belongs to questions of MTP, RTP past exams. Right? Okay, sir. Now, question number 17. Classic question, please read carefully. It says, EBC issues 4%, 1 lakh optionally convertible preference shares. The main part here was that dividend is non-cumulative. See, in, pre in case of preference share, when nothing is mentioned, we assume dividend to be mandatory. But here, dividend is non-cumulative. That means, it is not mandatory. Whenever any element is not mandatory, it is not a financial liability. It will become an equity idol. Right? Sir, why equity? Because dividend you will pay only when you have funds to repay. Right? Dividend you will pay only when you have profit. That you do with the equity owners. Na? That you do with equity items. That is, you are treating the preference like your owners. That is why you will give the pro uh, give amount only when you have funds. So dividend will become equity for you. Principal options to convert is with the holder in this question. So it is FL. Savings will be equity. So how to solve this question? Simple. Normal CFI question, five steps. Step number one, cash flows. In cash flow, don't take anything coupon. Why? Because dividend is FL. It's not a FL. It's not a FL. Not mandatory. So nothing will come in coupon. But principal is of course FL. You will take this in uh, your cash flows. Okay. When you uh, find step number two, fair value, you will compute the fair value because it is a CFI. When you compute the fair value in cash flows, only principal cash flow will come. Coupon will not come because coupon is not mandatory. Then step number three, difference. Step number four, yes. Step number five, validity. That is, that's it. Then the entries were asked. We passed the entries as well. So what was the important part in this question? This part. When dividend is not mandatory, it is not a financial liability. Don't take it. Don't make it part of your cash flows. Right. This much we studied I guess this was the 50% I was talking about. This is your part one of the revision. Of course, when we complete the remaining chapter, we will also record the part two of the revision. But if you liked the session, do uh, drop me a message. If you liked this revision, uh, for those who are watching it on YouTube, uh, if you liked it, please leave a comment uh, whether you liked it or not. Notes, as I said, available on Telegram. And, oh yeah, 50% done. And I try to keep it very detailed. I try to go slow with it. I try to give you the logics also. So if, we, if you were able to uh, see this session, and even if you were able to recall, let's say 30, 40, 50% of the concepts, you are in a great position, right? It is just that when you study anything for the first time, you might understand 10-20% concepts. When you revise it again, you will understand another 10-20%. When you revise it multiple times, that is when you achieve that efficiency. Right? So try to give my best in this revision video, which you can refer anytime whenever you want. Okay? So if you like the session, do like it, share it with your friends as well. And also do the writing practice, uh, whatever is required. Okay? So I will... Uh, end this revision session as of now part two of course i will upload it for you as well so thank you so much i am glad you liked it um please please don't leave this topic it is a very easy topic try to give logics also okay so thank you so much bye bye everyone take care see you all